Hello, welcome. Today, we're gonna be talking about five things that I wish I had done differently at the beginning of my fitness journey. Disclaimer, these are my experiences and my life. My life, my rules. If you don't relate to these things, that is amazing for you, okay? But I know that if I relate to these things, somebody else does too, because there's nothing new under the sun. I know that somebody else is going through what I went through. So, let's get right into it. Number one, first thing I wish that I had done differently, not winging it so much. What I mean by that is completely unstructured workouts. I know it's pretty hard when you're at the beginning of your fitness journey to know how to structure a workout routine. Um, what I did for a very, very, very long time was just go in, basically do a full body workout every single time, which there's nothing wrong with. Like for some people, that is actually better to do a full body workout. For me personally, I wish I had not done that. I don't think it was that great. Also, I wasn't aware of how much I was lifting. I was just kind of like lifting every time. No tracking whatsoever. Wasn't tracking food, wasn't tracking weights, wasn't tracking workouts, wasn't tracking anything. So I wish maybe I had a little bit more structure. Personally now, I like a push-pull legs routine. That's not the only one that exists. That's not the best one. There is no best one. Honestly, the full body workout might be what works for you. It wasn't for me. All right, thing number two, just going through the motions. Kind of aligns with the last one where I wasn't really paying attention to anything. Just going through the motions, what I mean by that is during your workouts, the intensity is questionable. I see actually a lot of people doing this where they get this idea that they just need to meet this certain rep requirement and um, they just meet it and that's it. And maybe it's not actually that challenging. They're just like, all right, I got three sets of 10. That's all I need. Now I'm gonna be bossing it out. That's not really the way it works. All right, you need some intensity. So I wish I hadn't just gone through the motions and tying in with the last point I really wasn't tracking anything so there was no way for me to know like if I was actually getting better sometimes still I don't track that closely but I can literally just remember what I did last time because it was like two days ago so if you can do that that's awesome but another thing with the just going through the motions is for some beginner beginners that actually might be quite important because I've also seen a number of people go into the gym, they know that they need to be intense, they're going for that intensity, they're upping the weights, but their form is extremely questionable. And I'm like, ooh! To a certain degree, you do just need to go through the motions as a beginner up until you can get the right form and body awareness. Please do not move up in weight if your form is questionable. So you should be like going till failure, going till technical failure, which means your form is still there, pretty much. Like you're not gonna get hurt. You're not gonna hurt yourself. Your form is safe, but you can't get more reps with good form, if that makes sense. That's technical failure. So that's what you wanna do once you're ready, once your form is there. I wish I had done that. I didn't really do that. I just went through the motions and sometimes my form was questionable. There was like a while, I don't know what I was doing. That's okay, look at me. Bruh. That is okay. Okay, third thing I wish that I had done differently, taken rest more seriously. And this goes into a lot of facets. So sleeping rest, very important. Seven to nine hours. You people getting like three, four hours and being like, I'm built different. No, you're not. No, you are not. You are built hurting yourself. Uh, you're hurting your brain. Actually, you might be built different. I heard that there's like 0.001% of people who can survive on like two hours of sleep. If that's you, I don't believe you. I don't. Um, but who cares if I believe you or not, you know? The normal, the average person, me included, seven to nine hours is ideal. So that's what I would be going for. Another form of rest, rest days. I used to not really take that into consideration at all. I would work out six or seven days a week and not rest. So there is something called active rest days, which is like, you're still doing something, but it's not really like, bah, like a workout. For that, I would usually go for a walk, go for a bike ride, go for a hike, roll around in my room, having an existential crisis. <laughs> Just kidding on that one. Um, But yeah, so like you're still doing something, 
but it's restful. It's restful. The rest days doesn't really apply to everybody. It kind of depends how intense your workouts are because some people can work out seven days a week, but it's because the workouts they're doing really aren't that strenuous so they don't need very much time to recover but if if you be working out the way that i try to work out now which is like ah, you know i'm like ah, that's how i'm working out uh you need at least a couple of days to recover finally rest within the workout so rest times and this can actually be used for a form of progressive overload and how much you're resting again kind of does depend on your goals some people are working out like an athlete whatever that means but for somebody like me who is kind of going more for hypertrophy muscle building slash strength at the moment usually between one and a half and three minutes is good for me but you you should be sorry that was crazy my camera overheated so I had a protein bar in the meantime okay back to what we were talking about rest times so what you're aiming for or at least what I wish I had kind of been more aware of resting up until my heart rate recovers so what are you doing Ricardio are you evil or nice with an evil face that's none of your business if that makes sense so that it's not like beating like crazy and I'm like about to have a heart attack and I'm like let's go round two you know and then I get into the next set wish I hadn't really done that low-key that's like one of the lesser regrets out of everything else that I wish I'd done differently that one's like eh, yeah eh. all right number four thing that I wish that I had done differently aside from just fitness I wish that I had done this differently in my life in general because low-key it definitely ruined my life for quite a few years and probably took some off the end of it so <laughs> is what it is irreparable damage let's go anyway it's seeing food as your enemy so when i first started out my goal was to basically get as skinny as possible and there was a couple problems with that one that is just not my body type i was aiming for a body type that i quite frankly uh, was not born to have I think in a healthy way and also I really did like working out so I couldn't really work out the way that I wanted to and look the way that I wanted to these two things were not in line I couldn't have both but I wanted both and so I knew at the time a little bit misled by myself it was the blind leading the blind and I was the leader and the follower. I knew that to lose weight, you need to be in a calorie deficit. However, I kind of looked at that and I was like, well, less is more. If I have nothing, then I don't have to worry about tracking anything. I'll just have as little as possible. That was a disaster for multiple reasons. Reason number one, I got an eating disorder. Reason number two, the hyper restriction and this happens to a lot of people, can lead to binging. So that is very counterproductive. Also, it's very mentally and physically taxing. You don't want to do that. So don't restrict so much that you lead yourself into a binge because probably that will happen to you. And don't beat yourself up for it. Don't beat yourself up for it, okay? It happens to the best of us, but there are ways to prevent that, like not being in such a giant calorie deficit. All right, that'll help you not binge. My camera overheated again. Okay, where we left off. Uh, seeing food as the enemy, how I did, and just like not eating at all. Not only did my entire relationship with food suffer, like my whole life was suffering, uh, my workouts suffered also. Even if you're not working out, you need food just for your heart to beat and your brain to brain believe it or not. So now also food is fuel, whatever. I like to try to have a meal like an hour before or a snack like 30 minutes before a workout, preferably with carbs and maybe some protein um, just to fuel my workout. The workout will be better. You'll feel stronger. You'll lift more. You just need food. Okay. That's the end of the story. Along those same lines, this one didn't really apply to me, but I know that it does apply to a lot of people because I see it all the time. Ignoring the food aspect completely. I usually recommend to a lot of beginners, if you think that you're gonna get overwhelmed changing like every aspect of your life 
super quickly to just focus on making small changes or change one thing at a time. So if you want to start by just going to the gym and maybe eat the way you were already eating before and then once you get into the habit of going to the gym, take a look at your diet and decide like how can I improve this? That's a really good way to go about it. But I hear a lot of people say I'm just going to work out so hard it doesn't matter what I eat and I'm going to eat like poop every day eat like not good every day and it won't really matter because I'm working out so hard. A lot of people say you can't outwork a bad diet and I second that but even if you could technically outwork a bad diet why would you want to just eat a little bit better and then your workouts will improve you'll you'll feel better so yeah okay and finally I actually still struggle with this all the freaking time so maybe this is some advice advice I need to oh my god there's a cat in the street you can't see it so maybe this is some advice I need to take uh, also but having no goals I think this is also something that applies to all of life but for fitness specifically having no goals slash changing up your goals too quickly will lead you to never reach them or also hyper focusing on the short term so this might look like you wake up on Monday and you're like, okay, I'm gonna get shredded. It's time to cut. And then you're four days into your cut and you're like, oh no, I wanna get big, I wanna bulk. So then you start bulking. That is not enough time to do anything. You need at least like a couple months to start seeing changes in any one direction, pretty much, like actual changes, at least for me. Changing up your goals too quickly will lead you uh, nowhere. It'll lead you to pretty much just stay where you are if the goals are counteracting each other. And I think what helps with that is not hyper-focusing on the super short term. Don't be weighing yourself every single day. Don't be taking body measurements every single day. Don't be, you know, if you look at yourself every single day, the changes are happening so slow, you probably won't see them happening. So what you need to do is give yourself time. Okay, so those are my five things that I wish I had done differently or could wrap my little pea brain around now, uh, but I still struggle. Again though, I mean, I made a ton of mistakes throughout my experience doing fitness. I would just like to let you know that if you feel like you're making a bunch of mistakes, you're fine, dude, honestly. There was a period of years where I ate maybe 10 grams of protein a day and worked out every single day and was going crazy. That was not good for me. I still, f I, I mean, look at me now, you know, I made all these mistakes and I turned out fine. I turned out I turned out okay. It's it's a journey, so you have time. And if none of these things apply to you, or if you don't care and like you like taking no rest days, like whatever you like doing, that's also fine. This is just my experience. I'd recommend you don't get all of your information from one source, and that includes me, because what works for me might not work for you. Might not work for your neighbor, might not work for the next person, you know? Experiment a little, experiment. Get out there and try new things. See what you like, see what works for you, see what doesn't work for you. There is no perfect split. There is no perfect diet. There is no perfect schedule. I'm just saying uh, these are the things that I would have changed. I do hope this was helpful in some way. If you have something different in your fitness journey that you think you would change or that has helped you or that you've learned along the way, if you would like to leave a comment letting me and everybody else know what that thing is, that'd be awesome. And apart from that, please don't forget to like the video, subscribe, comment something else if you want to comment something else, and um, have a beautiful rest of your day or evening. Adios.